Hello, welcome to part two of my needle felting tutorial. Um, today we're going to make the midground or the hills, and we start off by just laying down some um, nice green. It's a um, it's a mixed colour, um, a blended. Well, it's again a tops because it gives it a nice sort of uh, sheen, and also you've got the the multiple colours in there, which just gives it that little bit of extra um, interest. Um, plain greens are fine, but I prefer to use the uh, the mixed ones because as you lay them down, you don't quite know what colours you're going to get where, so um, it makes it really interesting. I think now you'll notice here that I'm making a v-shape um, in the hills that is where we're going to put the Sun um, when we did the sky I said I wasn't going to put the Sun in until I'd got the hills that's because that's where I want to put it and I want to, you to be able to see how we do that to make it look as if it's going down behind the hills also add some depth to the picture so we're just now needle felting down, um, stabbing away at the uh, the midground there. And this is just the one colour at the moment. Um, swapping over to the clover tool to make it just a little bit faster for you. And you can actually start to see the, uh, the landscape. Um, building up and, and it just sort of starts to appear I, I just love doing this it's amazing and now I'm going to pick some slightly different color greens there's a, there's a much darker green there and just put put it in, in wherever it feels right really just adding some different colors to uh, make it more interesting and more realistic so there we go. That's good. Yeah, definitely gives it more interest. Now I'm going to take some very, very, very thin, very, very fine um, wispy bits and put them over the left hand hill. That's so that we slightly change the colour of that hill. Um, it just makes it, uh, well, it makes it more interesting, it makes it stand out, and you can see the difference between the two hills there in the centre. It also helps to add to the depth. Because you've now given the impression that one hill is most distinctly in front of the other. just edging the hill there um, to make it a nice smooth straightish line and to come down at the front so that it does give the impression of being in front of the other one. Just a nice bit of stabbing. And this is actually some locks, the uh, curly locks, just going down, um, different texture, a bit more interest. Um, I, I really, really like it. That was uh, part of the um, sort of fuzzy bit of the locks, the, uh, the bits that you don't normally get to use. Um, and now I will actually be using a curly bit of lock as well going down there that's it now if we use the curly locks here along the, uh, the sort of bottom of the hill um, where we've got that darker ridge um, and you needle felt it in um, like this it actually starts to look like perhaps a row of trees or a hedge row um, bushes so um, it's a really quick way of doing it and also it's um it does give it more texture
I'm really pleased with how this is coming on now. Alright, so I'm going to put a little bit more of the light green into the right hand hill there just to <coughs> finish it off and make it definitely look separate to the other one. And you can see there now how it how they join in the middle and how one looks in front of the other. I'm just adding a little bit more of the darker green. Just a very wispy bits, but it just slightly changes the colour um, of whatever you've got underneath it without having to mix colours up before you start um, to, to put, the, put the wall down. We just do it over the top. Um, you get very interesting effects as well because it becomes darker in some places and lighter in others. It'd be very unusual in nature to see um, a hill that is just, yeah, you know, just one solid colour. It doesn't doesn't really happen in in nature at all. So you need to get those different colours in there. And here we're adding another different colour. Um, and the, the way we're doing it um, here makes it look like there's a, a sort of a, <laughs> not a hill, it's not big enough to be a hill, but um, you know, a bit of a bump in the, in the landscape, um, a hillock maybe, because it's very small, but you can see there that just changing the colour makes a lot of difference to how it looks, so you've now got quite a nice um, mid ground coming there and uh, I'm just smoothing down or attaching some of the areas that uh, we've previously done uh, or when I'm when I'm doing these pictures I'm forever going back and adding um, stabbing bits that we've already done now you can see here I've put a mount over the top um, looking at it with the mount on does actually make quite a difference um, and you can get more of a, an idea of what the finished picture is going to look like um, by doing this so if you don't actually have the mount ready that you want to use then you can use a piece of paper with a hole cut in it and just put it over the top just to see what it looks going to look like And now we're going to add the sun. I've picked a darker yellow. This is actually um, carded wool, but um, it needs to show up on that yellow background of the sky. Okay, so, and one thing to remember is the sun is round. You need to make it round. Um, it's, it's, it's a perfect circle, except where it goes down behind the hills there, you see. Um, we've made that V shape and that, that that pushes the sun into the background um, that the hills are in front of it and the sun is setting Just uh, working on making sure it's nice and round. Because you've got to imagine that as a very large circle um, that's going down there behind the hills, although you can't see all of it. So. Um, and another way to make sure that it looks like it is behind the hill is to actually edge the hills again, um, giving it a, a nice 
really straight firm edge there next to the sun and that really will make it there you go it sort of makes it look as if it's behind the hill it makes it go back um, so I do that there we go and you can needle felt that in so that it doesn't look so much of a line and put a little bit more over on the underneath it and just change it. Yeah, here we go nice bit of needle felting there that will smooth it out there we go and you can see now that it does look much more solid the hill next to the sun and makes the sun sort of go back into the background a little there we go and the same with the other hill just a little bit of wool and by pulling that into a long strand and sort of twisting it a little bit it makes it a lot um, more of a definite edge a definite edge there so. which is what we want next to the sun here we go Yep, nearly there. Just a little bit more uh, needle felting down. I mean, you can add more um, curly locks into the field if you wish. Um, we will be doing more detailing anyway later on in the uh, series. For the moment we're basically just laying down the background. And smoothing it out with my hands, making sure it isn't stuck to the mat. And I've got a little bit of a red in there which I just want to get rid of, so you just pull it up and snip it off and we're there. Yep, looking good. Um, and now I'm just going to add a little bit more of the sort of ready orange to the sky there where it is just yellow. Um, just give it a little bit more interest um, and make it look more sunsetish, if that's a word. It is now because I've just invented it. sunset like okay where you've got the colors and you'll notice now where we put the clouds in the sky earlier and we put the yellow underneath the cloud that is actually just directly above the sun where the sun is going down so you can see why we've got that uh, yellow under the cloud now I mean you could have done it with 